Hey Joshua. We are pouring live from our porage in North Carolina tonight. Alan will be joining us shortly. We are exhausted. I'm just going to give you a heads up. <laughs> we packaged so many paintings today. We started at, I think it was 10 o'clock this morning, and we are just finishing up. Uh, Sandy, we are 20 miles north of Raleigh. So um, I'm just waiting for more people to come in, but I just want to let you guys know um, our auction was successful again last night, and everyone was really well, did really well at emailing us. Um, we got most of the invoices out. We have a couple that are going to Canada that we will get quotes on tomorrow. And what you're looking at on your screen are our pours from last week. Um, I think I have tennis elbow from using that tape gun today and from writing up everything. I'm just, my arm is killing me. <laughs> So, I'm just waiting on Alan. Of course, he's tending to his brother. And nobody's missed anything yet. <laughs> so, I think we're going to um, just do three pours tonight and answer questions. If you have questions, put them in caps so we don't miss it. Um, also, the mods are here. The moderators are here to help answer questions as well if we miss it. And um, I'm just gonna give you a quick glance at these paintings that we did last week. If I can lift them. <laughs> My arm is like, it's right here. It hurts so bad. But this was our fall pour for, from last week. It's absolutely gorgeous. Got a lot of beautiful cells in there. And Alan has joined us. Hello, everyone. That was the fourth floor. Huh? That was your fourth floor from last week. Oh. That was actually the first one. I don't remember that one. <laughs> this is Alan's. I call it his beating heart. <laughs> he got some great cells oh, in there. Hi, Shelly. Sorry, I'm late. It's understandable. I was telling them how exhausted we are. And this was the metallic bottle bottom, the double bottle bottom. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate your support. So do you guys remember, if you were here for the auction last night, um, I had the Echo playing royalty-free music. Well, apparently one of the songs wasn't, so they got us on a copyright strike. And remember I said I'll go to YouTube jail? <laughs> Bad girl. Thank you, Shirley. Appreciate the contribution. Uh, there was a Marianne, welcome from California. This question from Nina. Do I need to gesso bare wood boxes, coasters, etc. before pouring? You always want to seal wood before you pour on it. Yes. Lily, welcome from Argentina. I was telling you how bad my arm hurts. <laughs> so I had to put my magnifiers on again today. I took my glasses back on Saturday because I still was having problem with the progressive. So I'm wearing double glasses again tonight. And of course my eyes are killing me, but we'll get through this just fine. Right, Faye? That's right. Janelle is joining us. She says she can actually watch it live for once. Work second shift holiday, so the day off. She loves Yay. watching and learns so much. Well, thank you, Janelle. That's one of the reasons we're here. Yes, it is. 
so my first painting tonight is oh, going Janice. to be a flip and drag, but I want to put more color than I normally do. Oh my gosh, just putting gloves on hurts. <laughs> we got Stephanie, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, out of very early South Africa. Welcome. Paint elbow, Shelly says. Yeah, it's like tennis elbow. It's shipping elbow is what it is. Uh, Lori's got a question. What do you have covering your surface? Um, this is just an adult under pad. Like a, you could use um, PP pads for pets too, just to catch the paint. It makes it easier for us to clean up real quick. Well, and this is a washing machine tray um, that I have in my Amazon shop. And these are also in my Amazon shop and the link is below for that. Um, the box that it comes in, cut a piece and set it inside because it does have the grooves um, for water drainage. So this makes it more level. And take your level and get it all leveled off before you start pouring. I want to welcome Catherine from South Alabama. Kathy wants to know why you're hurting. She said she was she missed the reason. Ah, uh, shipping. We shipped 55 paintings today. So the tape gun was not my friend today. It beat me up. Yeah. And I wrote out invoices for my books too. So I got a little bit of pencil pain. <laughs> we got Del Castello joining us from Australia. Welcome. 3D Angel Studios says, love your paintings. I've learned a lot watching your videos. Great. I've been getting some wonderful comments lately from our viewers telling us how much they love to watch us. And you know what? We love you guys just as much. Uh, Catherine's got a question. She says, what temp should the room be that you pour in and cure in? Um, I'm always at about 76 degrees, um, especially if you're going to be doing resin. Um, ideal temperature for resin is anywhere between 72 and 75. Okay, Kathy wants to know, do you use USPS click and ship and carrier pickup? No, nope. I do it all myself. The one thing, it, the advantage that we have is I drive right by the uh, post office on my way to work every day, so it's not a big problem. And we have not checked our um, fan mail post office box yet either. So if anybody sent us anything, I'm really sorry. We're going to get there and, and open the box and see if there's anything in it. We meant to do it Saturday and we totally forgot. Uh, let's see. I saw a question. Marianne Lopez uh, Lopes wants to know, how do you price your pieces? Um, right. Well, previously uh, it was 30 cents a square inch. But now we are resining most of our pieces um, as a final top coat. So they'll be priced accordingly. Uh, Barb Miller says, loves your work and has learned so much. Please tell me how you cover your resin paintings when drying them. That's very key. Yeah, I have a baker's bun rack that, you know, you put the big full sheet cookie sheets in. And I cover the cookie sheets with these pads. And I can fit eight um, paintings in there. So I do eight every time. So I utilize the space. We want to welcome Brenda. She's a newbie. Shanae has joined us. Hello, welcome, everyone. Shelly's here from Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. So and we're from Houston. Sorry. I want to keep it on the fall side. So I'm going to go ahead and use some Deco Art Worn Penny. This is a dark copper. Oh my gosh. It hurts. <laughs> And I'm going to use some black. Hey, Ryan is here early. And you haven't missed a thing. We're just starting. I want some olive green. Debbie joins us from West Virginia. Mary's joining us from Astoria, Oregon. Awesome. And I think that might be the only three colors I want to use. Dell's got a question. 
Yes. Um, do you sell? I would love one for my hospital while terminal. Um, we just pulled, was it 55? 55. 55 paintings off of Etsy last night and sold them on our auction last night. Right. So the next week, two weeks, we're going to be working on filling the Etsy shop with new paintings. If you see if you see a video and you want to purchase that painting, just shoot me an email at christinawelchart at yahoo.com. And we can do a private sale as well if you don't want to wait. Uh, Renee, thank you for uh, putting your questions in caps. That helps uh, myself and the moderators um, to uh, answer the questions and it identifies them easier. I'm also, Question, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm also going to add some native turquoise metallic in there too. Uh, Renee asks, does the altitude change the drying? Did some at their cabin at 5,000 feet and yes. some of them cracked. Yes. Never had a problem before. Yeah, I would think so. So I sprayed my cup with the WD-40 silicone spray. I use this just to release the paint from the cup and not for creation of cells. But you can get a few cells from that. All my paints have treadmill silicone in them. Alexander says he's learned so much watching you and just wants to thank you. Thank you for watching. Appreciate everybody joining. Uh, okay, we got Talia joining from South Africa. We got a question question from Brenda Woodridge. I've had trouble with my canvases cracking. How do I keep that from happening? Your canvases or your paint? Probably the paint, right? Are you adding water to your paint? Nate suggested thinner paint. Well, thinner paint cracks sometimes too, though. It's whatever you mix in with your paint. Uh, Kathy's art course says I haven't gotten an invoice from yesterday's auction. I did send her one. I can resend it, Kath. Oh, Nate says that was for altitude. Oh, okay. Sorry, Nate. Didn't mean to step on your toes there, bud. So I have a little more than what I normally would use because I want to um, move it around the canvas. Normally I go the height of my pinky finger on the side of the cup. And that way you don't use too much paint. So I'm going to flip it in the middle. Linda Bruce says, hey, my lovely chocolate, how was your day? <laughs> little inside joke. Yep. Sharon, let's, let's just say I melted today. <laughs> Sharon Bowie says, I did not receive an invoice via email. I did send them through PayPal. Um, don't worry, because the reminders will go out tomorrow morning anyway. But I'll, if I get um, time, as soon as we're done with the live, I'll send out those reminders. Can you write their names down, Sharon and um, Kathy? Okay. Barbara, thank you for your contribution. And thank you, Mary, too. Thank Appreciate you so the much. Support. Uh, I saw a question here. Um, Marco wants to know, the flood goes directly or you put it with water? The flow trail? I, I think that's what he's Okay, doing. when I mix paint, I use one part paint, one part Elmer's glue oil, two to four parts of Floetrol. I do not use water. Okay, Heather's got a question. What's the best way to tape off part of a canvas? I want to do the sil silhouette of the Disney castle with the pour being the castle and black being the negative space. You know, Alan and I were talking about this last week. I would like to try with contact paper and see if that would work. I have not tried it yet, so... Um, Crafty Jen uses, um, I believe it's some type of spray on. You might want to check out her videos. Her channel's Crafty Jen. Okay, Bo uh, has got a question. What kind of paint do you need to use for canvas? Acrylic paint. 
Chris wants to know, should I always gesso my canvases first? You don't have to, but if you don't like texture showing on your canvas when your paint is dry, I would suggest doing a coat of gesso and sand it before you pour on it. Amy Jane's got a question. How long do you let your canvas dry before sealing it? Um, I let it dry two to three days, and then I let it cure for two weeks. Uh, Stephanie Gagos, if I pronounce that right. Sorry yep. if I'm Stephanie. wrong, Steph. I'm sorry. Uh, she joined us. I just got her um, box ready to go. They'll be going out tomorrow. Okay, Amy Jane says, on the acrylic, is it gloss or matte or both? Um, I wouldn't use matte. I mean, you can, but I don't know. I just seem to like the glossy side of paint. Most of it finishes like um, a satin finish. Okay. Uh, Lori now wants to know, do you take a credit card or check for the auction items I purchased? Yes. When I send the invoice through PayPal, you can use a credit card there. So I'm just going to blow this out with my airbrush. This is also available in my Amazon shop. This is the compressor. It's very small. And this is just the airbrush. It's not very noisy at all. It's 25 PSI. And they run about $49.96. We sold 80 airbrushes last month, Alan. Wow. Maybe I should put my airbrush out there. No, you're not bringing the leaf blower in the house. <laughs> I don't know if that was brilliant, Kathy, but... It was just a crazy idea I had. And I egged him on, so it's my fault, too. <laughs> but he did not do what I thought he was going to do. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to create a mess. I'd have to clean up later. It's just grass. The rain would have washed it off. Mm -hmm. Either that or the dogs would have tracked it in. That's what I was worried about. Okay, Mary Ellen said, I did my first pour this week. Made a set of posters because I have access to a bunch of tiles. Everyone loves them. Well, yeah, congratulations. They are. I love Good the job, Mary. Bo wants to know what is your website address to purchase some of your work? Um, nor normally I have it on Etsy, but we did an auction last night and got rid of all of the paintings that were on Etsy. I think there's what five left in there. Yes, I think there's five left in there, so we'll be putting more up. Um, I always tell everybody if they see a video and they want to purchase the painting, they can contact me through my email or through Facebook. All the links are below. <laughs> Diana Baker says her husband used the leaf floor in the kitchen. We used it upstairs. <laughs> Kim Rudy says, I used my airbrush last week. It wasn't as hard as I was expecting. No. And I was happy with it. It just takes practice, that's all. Once you get that, learn how to get that edge, you're home free. Nate's feeling left out. He wants to know if he's the only mod here. Well, Kendra got a brand new baby nephew last night while we were having the auction. So she skipped out on us last night. Okay, Shirley wants to know, are we able to post pictures of our pores on your Facebook page? Um, you can send them to me. I don't think you can post the pictures, but you can send them to me, and if you want me to share them, I can share them. I would love to start a CWA crew group for all my subscribers, but you guys know I don't have a lot of time. I'm busy. <laughs> okay, Donna has a question. How do you clean your tiles before varnish? Do you let them sit with baby powder? Yes. And how long? And I then do. wipe with alcohol. I um, let them set about two or three days with the baby powder on them because tiles are the hardest thing to get the silicone off of. And when you clean them, 
wear gloves. You don't want to put your oil back on there because then you'll see it when you put your resin on. Uh, Marla's got a question. When making coasters, is one coat of resin enough? Um, I've been getting away with one coat. I actually just did one. Let me show you. And Marianne wants to know, do you sign your work on the side or the back? That's a very good question. You can sign it anywhere. Um, if you want it to be art gallery, you're probably going to want to sign, sign the front right bottom corner. <coughs> uh, this is one of the tiles that I just did. This is one coat. Of course, I tape off the back, so my backs are pretty nice and neat. And I add the little felt pads with the E6000 glue. And I do have these pads in my Amazon shop now. They're very tiny, but they're fine. They work. So that's one coat. And this is heat resistant. Even the art resin from Stone Coat is heat resistant to 475. I sent my mom one of these coasters and her coffee does not stick. The coffee cup does not stick to that resin. Uh, Mary's got a question. When you spray the back of the canvas, do you just spray water? Yes. Missed it. Just missed it, Mary. Yep. We just missed it. I'll okay. give you a peek and at this one. Let me see. Heather's got a question. I have a few people wanting to buy paintings. How do you price your work? Well, I price mine on the low end because we have so many paintings. But whatever you feel you're worth. If you've been doing art for a long time, you sure as heck aren't going to want to charge 30 cents a square inch like I do. The reason that we do is because we paint 8 to 10, 12 paintings a week. So we have to keep them priced low enough so that we can move them out the door. So that's it for that one, guys. Shelly Anderson says, I have a price sheet. Shall I post? Yeah. Shelly? Go ahead and share. Danny Dillard joined us. Hey, Dan. He says, I need a UNC themed painting. Oh, he's ordering already. Danny, I thought you were on vacation. <laughs> we definitely were not on vacation today. Wait. So I'm going to give Alan the floor. Oh, no. He's got a new toy that he's going to pour with tonight. We're going to see if it works. We're not sure. Lisa has joined us. She's late. And Danny says he wants one with a cross. Boy, special orders. Uh, Diane Yoder wants to know, have you ever used Minwax? And if so, how yes. did it do? Yes, but you don't want to use it in the wintertime because you may get some cracking. You have to be like 74 degrees, I think, with Minwax. But it's beautiful. It's just as good as the Liquitex. Oh, you can do any size you want, huh? I have quite a few there started. So I got to paint tomorrow, too. Those are some big canvases. I hope it's a team effort. <laughs> Any special advice for working that large? Um, you don't want to go in sections because you're going to end up with lines. So just pour and, and do it. Just pour it. Just have fun. You'd be surprised how well it'll come out just pouring it out. Okay. We got 12 by 12, right? Yes. Okay, I've got something I'm calling Gadget Magic. I am not Bob Ross's sister, Dan. <laughs> um, everybody's seen the Bottle Bottom Pours, for those who have been watching for a while. Uh, I've got another Bottle Bottom. It is an eight uh, divot um, that I'm going to try. It's something that I cut out of a splash. V8 splash bottle. So we're going to give this a try, see what happens. Um, I need the glove up first. Okay. 
<laughs> um, they're adult underpants, Diane. I have them in my Amazon shop, and that link is below. Oh, uh, Lori, that's just automatically on all my invoices if you want to leave a tip. It's not necessary. Not necessary. Um, tiles you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're 11 cents a piece. We buy them by the case for $11. Cut pads work, yeah. Yep, that puddle pads work too. Okay. What base color are you going to use? Uh, or do you want to get colors first? Let's go with colors first. Looking for some suggestions for colors. Ellen's all about letting you guys pick, so have at it. <laughs> Makes my job much easier. Remember, we got over 100 bottles of paint on the wall. Yes, Mary Ellen. Um, Minwax is... Uh, you always want to use polyacrylic, not polyurethane. Blue, pink, yellow, purple, red, brown. Okay. We're going to go with Artist Loft Cerulean Blue. Maroon. I think I want to limit to about five colors. Beth wants you to do it as a dirty pour. Dirty pour. Uh -huh. Okay. Peachy okay. colors, green, turquoise, purples, blue, metallic. Turquoise. Everybody knows how I like red. I'm going to go with so Soho Azo Red, deep. I heard yellow. Here comes Paula with the pearl. <laughs> just kidding, Paula. I'm just picking. We got Creative Inspirations Cadmium Yellow Light. I heard a purple too. Something about Lucas Lavender. No? No, it's too light. How about a Blick Deep Violet? I go darker. Even darker? Yeah, that one's that one should okay. be Okay, we're gonna go with Lucas Permanent Violet. And I want one more color. I put some white in there. Then we'll go with six colors. Yeah, we can always add silicone to the other one. Okay, I need one more color. We don't have a green. You don't um, want a green. I don't. Too I, much. Green does not play well with you. Unless you use a lime green. Yeah, let's go with brown backers. How about phthalo yellow green? I think I want a white base too. Do you want to put a um, Grumbacher iridescent Prussian blue in there? Because you want something metallic either. Yeah, that would be pretty. And I would put it next to the blue. And take off the. No, you can still put that in. Because you're going to draw purple from the red and the blue. Um, you want to watch how thick you put it on, Carol, because sometimes that will cause cracking as well. This is a base paint, right? Yes. I already shook it because I just used it. Paula's like, go, Alan. Go, Alan. <laughs> I'm going to put my base down. Gwen lives in Kinston and wants to take classes. We do private classes. Um, I just did one a, a few weeks ago. It was fun. And you did not wipe the edge of that off. I did not. That's all right. That's all right, because we'll probably use it again. I'm sure we will. I just don't like it dripping all over everything. <laughs> I'm messing. That's up. okay because you clean the jugs anyways. I don't no, mind. That's true. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. We had a good time last night. I don't think we're a power couple, though. Do you, Al? No. I'm just glad he likes to paint because otherwise he'd be in the house watching TV or working, which he needs to do tonight.
Oh, that's good, Kath. I've been thinking about getting a bigger torch. Um, I can help you as much as I can online by answering questions, but we do um, hands-on workshops with people here. Oh, I shouldn't say we, I should say I. Yes. <laughs> do I want to come to Missouri to give a lesson? <laughs> Ask you for a friend. <laughs> So um, if you guys watch Mixed Media Girl, Marcy, she's going to be coming to Raleigh in a couple months. So I think we're going to get together and do a live pour. So that will be fun to watch. And then tomorrow night, if you guys watch Stone Coats Live on Tuesday nights, um, she's going to be a guest, a guest host on there tomorrow night. So check that out tomorrow night. And I'll keep you guys posted on uh, if she's going to come here and pour with me. It's artists supporting artists. We all, well, at least I do. I, I support all of you in your endeavors as well. I'm not jealous and I'm not, I, how do I want to say it? I don't speak ill of anyone that does this online. I love to watch everybody do their paintings online. We all learn from each other. We all get ideas from each other. Good way to get arm muscles, stirring all that paint. All right, which color should I start with? Um, you're going to do a dirty pour, correct? So you want to get a cup, a paper cup. That's too big. <laughs> no. I don't have any smaller paper cups. Yes, I don't I don't have a big head, do I, huh? No. And that sometimes I'll get a comment that I take to heart and Ellen reminds me that it's just a comment. And we have so many people that watch us and so many subscribers that I shouldn't let one person bother me. If it's a nasty comment, um, and I reply back and they say something nasty again, they're no longer commenting on my videos. Um, I don't need that kind of stress, and I don't want my viewers seeing that nasty stuff. And yeah, Paula, I crawl into bed at about 3 o'clock. <laughs> See, we finally got bed last night about 2.30. Yeah, it was 2.30. Ellen and I stayed up late and had a bowl of Cheerios. <laughs> we had a long night last night. No more 50 painting auctions. No, well, actually we did 55. But we, we have five left that we didn't do. We use white as a base coat so the paint has something to glide on. And then the white inside of your dirty cup will create more cells because it sinks to the bottom and it pushes its way through creating cells. Even though we have treadmill silicone in there, you will get the lacing or you will get the webbing, just the cool effects from having the white inside the dirty cup itself. Um, I did, if you watched my last video, I used the Da Vinci panels that had the smooth gesso on the top it did bow but like I said in two weeks if it's still bowed then I will let you guys know but it looks like it's going down so you have to give it time to to relax and as far as using canvas panels if your canvas panels bow on you leave them alone and when it's cured after two weeks, you can set like parchment paper over the top and set something heavy on them and they should straighten themselves back out. Also, if you paint the underside, that helps keep it to keep it from bowing. So let's say you paint it two days before you're gonna pour on it, it should be dry enough that it shouldn't bow. I 
I have some paints in those bottles that have been there for three or four months. They work just fine. Eventually, I'll probably add one drop of silicone in them to freshen them up. But other than that, no. Well, I live um, 20 miles from Raleigh, Victoria. So she's going to be in Raleigh. I'm just going to wait for her to give me a buzz, say, Marcy, come on over, have dinner. Let's pour <laughs> some paint. <laughs> it's just going to be a hangout day, I think. Okay. I gave it a little swirl. That is the bottom of a V8 splash bottle that Alan cut out, and he's going to pour over. Remember what I said, it goes slow, babe. Yep. We have been sealing all of our paintings with resin. Um, actually, I'm going to show you guys a couple. Don't pull back, just go. Because then you'll drip. Slow. Did you bend your cup? You have to force it. Go ahead and go. Someone said your thing's not in the center. <laughs> and what you feared is happening. It's running over the edges of it. Is it like I said it was going to? But you're yes. still getting some petal effect. And some mud. <laughs> Just pour it, hun. You'll be fine. Yep, we've been in North Carolina since 2003. We've been in our house here since 2004. The shipping costs to Australia are crazy. The shipping cost to Canada is crazy. I hate that for you guys because I know a lot of you want my paintings and I just, I understand to spend hundreds of dollars to have them shipped, it's just crazy. Uh, Sharon, we do it all outside. We do not put anything in our drains at all. We do it all outside in, in the driveway. And everything is pretty much wiped out before it gets washed, so we don't have a lot of paint out there either. That's great, Lynn. <laughs> Come on, Nate. Nate, I was looking at my embossing stuff today. <laughs> Um, the stone coat art coat resin has zero VOCs. You have that very small hint of resin, but it's not anything that will hurt you. It just, it won't, um, make you nauseous or anything. I do not just so tiles first. I just clean them with alcohol. Looks like a turkey. Is that where we're going to call it? The I Thanksgiving know. turkey? I think when you take that off, maybe use a skewer and pull some of that in so you get some design on that one side. I think it's time to come off. I don't know, Alan. Can we handle, handle a busload of people coming here? <laughs> I mailed a lot of paintings to Texas today. And what was the other one we had quite a few from? California. California, New York, Maryland, Florida. Well, I didn't get the design I was expecting. And I told you you wouldn't. You told me. Yep, I did tell him that, guys. But what you got to do is live and learn. You're not going to pull it with a skewer? 
Are you gonna dump yeah. that whole side off? Gonna dump the whole side He's off. gonna dump that whole side off. So he's gonna have an offset. I let Alan do his thing because I've been reprimanded by viewers that I'm disrespectful to him. So I just let him do his thing. Nate, did you retract your own message? <laughs> A lot of people don't get us. We we let we love to bicker. We never fight fight. We just love to bicker, and we do it in fun way. And people take it the wrong way, so. And I do, Paula, I do micromanage <laughs> It's true, it's banter, yes. If you can't critique your spouse and get away with it, then that's not the person for you. That's the way I look at it. Um, Martine, you can either use um, a liquid varnish, water-based varnish, or resin, or a spray-on varnish. I'm not even going to tell you what I see in there. What do you see in there? I can tell you. <laughs> Please tell me. People think I'm crazy. Does it look like an angel? No. What do you see? Let's just say deer season. You see a deer in there? Where do you see a deer? The very like deer. In the center. Oh, it does. <laughs> Turn it around so they can see it. Ellen sees a deer. The white part looks like a deer with antlers. Well, your corners really sold out, didn't they? Yes, they did. Shelly says it's BMB. Linda says it's a large fall leaf. Yeah, pick it up and turn it around so they can see your little gear. <laughs> Catherine says, oh, it does. Where's my rifle? <laughs> I make it, Barbara. Um, Artist Loft has a iridescent medium that you mix equal parts with um, the initial paint and then add your flow trawl and your glue. Just touch up my sides a little. Just try not to muddle them. Corners. <laughs> See his little deer? Sorry about that. I'm going to tilt it without losing. It won't dry like that, though. Okay. This is, I think that's ready for the drying rack. Where much you like your bottom so you don't drip all over? That's some. Pretty cool skins. Yeah, let's see. I'm gonna lift it. Um, we show them uh, next Monday. All these paintings that we're doing tonight, we'll show them next Monday. And if you missed the beginning, we showed last week's paintings. You can always go back and watch. Off to the drying rack. Are you gonna torch it? Want me to torch it because your hands are yeah, hot? I'm, <laughs> I'm a mess. You're a mess. You're a hot mess. We're both a hot mess.
I just want to see if that white's going to pop up through. I don't want you to get any little white pinholes. Oh, she's all sold out. There's nothing new coming up. Sorry, she, he, whatever. <laughs> I'm looking at his runoff to see if I can pull a couple skins. Take cover, Linda. I hate when it storms here, too. I am going to pull a couple skins. So when you have this much runoff, and you feel like you're wasting paint, get yourself some photo paper. I buy satin or gloss finish. And I just use my palette knife. And I pick it up and drag it on the paper. Give it a quick torch. And I put it on the drying rack. And you'll be able to make jewelry with this stuff. And I have jewelry videos out there, too, if you want to learn how to do that. I'm not even watching the chat screen. I'm sorry. Hmm. I just use the palette knife. I just scrape. These would have made some cool tiles, too. Catherine Poole says, we need to have fluid painting conventions. I wonder if they actually have those. Thank you, Camille. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. If you join us next Monday, uh, we will show the uh, all the paintings that we do tonight live uh, next week. And Victoria wants to know what type of uh, photo paper? Um, any kind of um, photo paper for your printer. I buy the satin and I buy the gloss. You can usually find it at the dollar store. So don't spend a ton of money on that. I try to have acrylic pouring as cheap as possible for y'all. So you're not spending a bunch of money on all these expensive pouring mediums and paint and I wanted to let you know too um, Jerry's sale is good until September 9th and I'll show you what I got April wants to know what size you put the paint on on the, on the finish side you're not going to peel them off <coughs> give me one of those Soho tubes Thanks, babe. Okay, so if you're looking to buy paint, now's the time to do it on Jerry's. These tubes here are 8.45 ounces, also known as 250 mil. These are 350 until September 9th. The big tubs are 650. These are normally 25.95. And this is the paint that I mostly use. I love Soho. Um, they also have Grumbacher on sale. And the big jugs of the Creative Inspirations are on sale right now for $12.21. But you have to buy four. Not four of one color, but four. So I always buy two white, a black, and a color. And now I've got all the colors. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's it takes a couple days for it to dry on the paper. Like with painting, you want to let it cure. Nancy Lochner says they're having one in Orlando next year. A painter's convention? Well, maybe we should all go. Uh, Sarah's got a question. How long does it take for the paint, uh, I think she meant to dry on the paper? A couple days. But you want to let it cure, too. And you will have to clean the silicone off of it when you set it in your jewelry. And if you're using silicone. Victoria wants to know, who is Jerry's? Jerry'sArtorama.com. We have the um, headquarters here in North Carolina, but if you don't live here, 
you don't have the stores. There's a lot of places that have stores that are in the region, but not all states have them. Uh, let's see. Beth just wants to let you know half uh, hexagon campuses are half off at Hobby Lobby. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Thanks for letting me know that. <laughs> we don't have that kind, do we, hon? No. Uh, Sherry wants to know where do you buy the paint that is on sale? Jerry'sArtorama.com. If you get $35, you get free shipping. And somebody else asked, uh, how long is the uh, sale of Stone Coat? Catherine Poole, any idea how long the Stone Coat sale is? I still have the code. We have only had the code for a little over a month, so it's going to be, we're going to have it for a while. And you can use it more than once. So if you've already ordered, you can order again and use the code again. Okay. Uh, comment. Sun has concluded that poor painting is chaos theory. You never know what you get, but it's great fun. It is fun. And Asma from Pakistan wants to know, what is Alcohol Inc.? And Amazon is not available in Pakistan. Oh, that sucks. You can't find it. Um, Alcohol Inc. Alcohol Inc., we, you can use it for painting, making paintings as well, into the white base or whatever. But we use it a lot for resin work to make like petri dishes. I'll show you one. I did this one with alcohol ink. And this is the front. So when you're pouring it, you're pouring it this way. So all the gold, of course, stayed at the top. But it did make a, a little appearance through here. And you can use those for coasters. They're cute. It's fun to play with it. Heather wants to know, what do you clean silicone up? We got a heartbeat on her. Oh, I don't know why. Having, having a hard time focusing. Okay, hold on. Sometimes that fixes it. Did it fix it? Do you see why we want to get new filming equipment? <laughs> That's what we're saving up for from all of our sponsor money. Okay. Um, Kathy Owen wants to know, I took a few of those photo cards. It's back. It's back. You need to put the canvas down. All right, hold on. And it's back again. I'm sorry. Close your eyes, guys. I know a lot of you get migraines. Kathy wants to know I took a few of those photo cards and glued them to blank stationary cards and they warped. Does anyone know how to unwarp them? The PVA was very, very thinly applied. I don't know. I only cut them out for jewelry, so I don't really know. Unless you would paint the back before. You, well, what about gel medium? Paint on it before you put them on, put gel medium, and then put them on. And put gel medium over them. Is it still doing it? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, got another question. Uh, Jean Marie wants to know. I know the water Jean. is uh, that water in the paint can cause cracking, but does glue all help with not cracking? It does. It has a polymer in it. That's why we use the glue all and not the school glue, because the glue all has the polymer in it. It's the binder. Right? It's a binder. Yep. Okay. Trickinini Niki says I bought a ton of stone coat epoxy with the code, but can I buy all colors and still use the code? Or do I have to buy You can more buy epoxy? whatever you want and use that code. You don't have to buy just resin. And those metallic powders are beautiful. They just sent me some of the new ones. So I really need to play with my resin. So I'm thinking about doing a traveling tree ring. What do y'all think? Okay. Shelly says yes. Nina's yep. We're getting a lot of yeses. But I think I want to do it on a Payne's gray background. And I'm going to use some metallics. Lisa just said, I received stone coat, thought I got artist coat. They sent quick coat, no thickener. 
Oh, um, call customer service. They'll fix that for you. Their customer service is awesome. Talk to Shay or I think Melody. I talk to Shay a lot. And Shay also is an acrylic pourer. Maybe after this video, you can give a, an example of some of the stone coat finish pieces. Sure. Just to get an idea. Um, yeah. The stone yeah, we'll coat. show you some resin pieces when we're done with this pour. Does a great job. Uh, we have one that's that one is just flawless. It, that stuff is just flawless. <laughs> So this is Payne's Gray mixed with, this is done as a base coat. So there's no glue in this, just water and Floetrol. And the only reason we put water in is because we want it runny, like melted ice cream. But I also put some gunmetal metallic in with it, so it does give it a little shine. Thank you, Nate. Nate's on the job tonight. Is he? We got a troll? Nope, nope. Oh. He's just Answering giving out the code. The oh, good. Code. Yeah, I should have said that. My bad. My head is all about shipping today. <laughs> How much does it weigh? Where is it going? <laughs> What's the size of the package? What size is that box? We tried to be a tag team and get them done quick, but we just didn't, did we? we <laughs> it was nah, all nah, day. Nah, nah. Yep. It was fun, though. So our next auction probably won't be until November. Well, November 1st, we have our sponsored giveaway. So everyone that's donating from now until October 31st is automatically entered into the drawing for our sponsor giveaway. And that giveaway is awesome because we let you pick which painting you want and it's resined. And we also give away jewelry and um, it's mostly stuff that we create for the sponsors. And if anybody wants to donate, um, below the screen. Yep. Um, right next to the, where you type into chat, there's a super chat there. It's a dollar sign. That's where you can donate. Or down below, we have the link to PayPal if you want to donate privately. And your name's automatically put in the jug. We have a lot of sponsors so far this past month. August was a great month for us. And all the money is used for canvas and paint so that we can keep bringing these videos to you. But now we're talking about getting a new camera. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate your support as usual. I don't like this torch. I have to fill one of those new ones. <laughs> Lisa, thank you for your contribution. Appreciate that. Okay. Actually, Nate was one of the ones that won in our... Nate won twice. Previous giveaways. He won his painting and he won a set of posters. Thank you, Kathy, for your support. And then we have, hopefully soon, our 50,000 subscriber giveaway coming up. We're thinking probably the end of October, right? Could be. If everybody shares our channel, we get there quicker. So we'll have, and that giveaway is going to be um, paint pouring kits and a few other things. Okay. So since I'm using the paints gray, I do want to stay with the silver blues um, palette. I don't have a lot of silver mixed up though. Let's see. So we can use a little bit of Craftsmart gunmetal. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how bad it hurts to. Uh... Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate your support, Sherry. Um, 
I could even use some Craft Smart Purple Pearl in there because that blue would be beautiful with pearl, purple on it. That's a first. We got Marilyn Lynch asking Nate if he will marry her. <laughs> she wants a painting. Aww. <laughs> I'm going to use Craft Smart Blue Eyes. Now you can see most of my metallics are craft paint because they have so many colors to pick from. And as long as you're mixing in them, in them in with a better quality paint, they they play well together. Let's see. So I need... Kathy, thank you for your support. You didn't, you didn't save me any Prussian Blue, did you? <laughs> no. Guess what you're gonna be? Doing. I'm gonna be mixing. I can't. My arm hurts. We'll use some. Pearl. We'll use some. Yeah, we're gonna definitely get to that one too. So here's some midnight blue. So we need something dark besides the gunmetal. Um. Yeah. Peacock pearl. Now I'm wondering if I should pull that purple out. Put a little Lisa, oyster. good luck with your knee surgery. Oyster pearl. Ellen's mom had knee surgery, what was it, three weeks ago? And she was here today. She's getting around pretty good. Nate's engaged. Uh-oh. Um, Shirley Coffee saying pink, pink, pink. You know, I did get some berries. Let me look. I got a deco art berry metallic. And I got a Craft Smart Pink Turlamine Metallic. I'm just going to put a bunch of colors in there because they're all going to be layered. So, And we are going to travel around the canvas. I want to separate those like this. It's peacock Pearl. I have Peacock Pearl right here. Okay. I did. And I think. No, yeah. he says, I think you are an inspiring team. Love watching you guys. Thanks for all the good information. Well, appreciate so the welcome. feedback, Nellie. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and put some pearlescence in there, even though we have the oyster pearl. All right. I am going to spray the cup first with the WD 40, which Alan did not do. I did not. You never do. You forget. I'm notorious for that. And he's still shaking the paint with the nails no, in it. No, no, I did not do that this time. See, we're bickering. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with the Pearl Essence. Uh, Shelly says, how can I share the price list? I tried to copy and paste, but it will not allow me. Um, if you guys want that um, price list, I believe I have it on my computer. I can post it on Facebook. So I'm then going to go with the Midnight Blue Metallic. And that one is from Craftsmart. Lisa's asking about my mom. She said, my first two weeks ago tomorrow, how is she doing? Well, she... She's doing good. She went to rehab for, what was it, two weeks? Two weeks yeah, two yeah. weeks. And Craftsmart Blue Ice Pearl. She was here today. Yep, she was out today. We haven't seen her in a while. The oyster pearl, and we're gonna go right into the pink turlamy. Stephanie wants to know: Can you please do a video on gold leaf and a stencil? I don't have any gold leaf. I've never really played with it. Nate, Nate has. Do Nate does it. Yeah. Nate, do you have any videos on uh, what Stephanie's asking about? I'm going to do one more round. Hard to decide what colors to put next. 
try to mix them up a little bit. It's a lot of paint. Everybody's quiet, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got a couple comments. Uh, They're watching me post. Stephanie's going to look up Nate. Uh, Shirley says she loves how those look layered. And Stephanie says, or Jean Marie says, she watched Nate's elephant video. Oh, it's yeah, his great. elephant video is fantastic. If you want to learn how to emboss on an acrylic pouring, that's who you want to go watch is Nate. Okay, so that's I'm it. just going to go around the canvas. Uh, Mary Ellen wants to are you just Christina Welsh? On Facebook, that's actually Welch, W-E-L-C-H. And it's Christina Welch Art. Christina Welch Art. The link is below in the description box to get there. My battery better not die before you're done. You said, keep your fingers crossed for you. Nancy Rains wants to know, paint, flow trial, and water? Nope, paint, flow trial, and Elmer's glue all. One part paint, one part Elmer's glue all, two to four parts flow trial. There's a lot of artists that add water. Um, I do not. And you do, it's not a rule, but I get my best results with that recipe. Amber says, this is her first time seeing anything like this. She's a paintbrush gal, so this is pretty awesome. Well, thank you, Amber. Glad you could join us. So I already know where I want to start pouring because I don't like all that white there. <laughs> It kind of paled out on me. It wasn't as vibrant as I thought it was going to be. And I used some pretty bright colors. But let's stretch it out so we may find some more in there. And I don't have Allie here telling me to use my cuppy hands. She's my cuppy hand police lady. So I'm really going to stretch this out because I'm really not digging it. Well, Shirley says, get those cuppy hands. I don't want to save any of it. <laughs> yes, if you haven't checked out Nate's uh, website, please do. Yes, Nate's channel is fun to watch. He Nate, likes he explains everything well for beginners, too. My little grasshopper. <laughs> it's not my grasshopper. Nate loves the colors. Uh, you're okay. It's metallics. It does that to the camera. But I'm going to torch that and see what happens. We got a ton of cells in there. We got Julia joining us. She says she's new and hasn't tried any cores yet, but she's excited to try as soon as possible. Julia. As a beginner myself, I've done, I think, what, nine pours? Now? I don't think you've even done that many, is it? Yeah, I think so. Anybody keeping track of how many pours Alan's at? <laughs> You'll love it. Don't be afraid. Try new things. Try things that you see that other people do in other videos. Um, the key thing about paint, uh, this type of painting, is uh, just to have fun with it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to, you know, create a masterpiece in your first 
your first piece or anything like that. Just keep trying. Shania says, I'm an expert. I am not by any means an expert. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm just wondering what it's going to look like dry because it's those colors are kind of dull right now. Marla says she's been doing this for about a month and is addicted. Yes. I totally lost the white pearl and the oyster pearl. I don't know what to do with it. Let them know what you do when you have a piece that you don't find. Well, usually I just scrape it and start over. But I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to look like when it's dry. Um, I do like texture in my paintings. That's why I leave a lot of paint on the canvas because I don't like the canvas texture to show. Um, Lynn, I just, I tape them off before I pour them so they're nice and clean and then I just put four little felt things on the corners. Okay, let me lift it up. That's what I was thinking, putting more white. Like the white and the midnight blue and going through it again. Because it's really dull. It's like the pearl, the purple pearl and the berries kind of took over. And I lost the midnight blue. It's it's there, but you can't really see it. And my but, run, look at that runoff. It's just a mess. Well, it is uh, four more white pearl and blow. And Nancy suggests swipe with the white pearl. Um, I don't think you get what you think you're going to get with the pearl when you swipe with it. Any questions? If, if you hate it, do a swipe. I think that's a question. Uh, what would it do if you use the airbrush on it? Oh, it'd just make a muddy mess. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. we'll pour that out. Oh, look how pretty that is. There's your white you were looking for. There's, no, that's still enough. I do have to use regular white to get some contrast because otherwise it's going to blend right in. So let me go ahead and put just a little bit of white in here. And Marilyn says, heck, just send it to me. A lot of people say that. If you don't like it, just give it to me. A <laughs> little bit of the blue ice. Shelly suggests a ribbon pour on top. Nate's saying white and teal. Uh oh. I'll have Debbie put some silicone in here. Actually, I'll do it. So, when you run out of paint, I always have a bottle of white with no silicone. So, when you're in mid pour, it never fails. You run out of something. So, I'll just take some of this, pour it in my white bottle. And then we got Amber suggesting ribbon, some yellow, and Monterey's suggesting mini pour with three different colors. So I used about half that, and those are 16 ounce bottles. So when I add my silicone, it's one drop for every two ounces. And you don't have to put silicone in your white. I do, but you don't have to. Gosh, that's pretty. All right. A little bit more. Uh, Marilyn wants to know what size is the canvas? That is a, that's a 12 by 16. 12 by 16. Yes. Let me put a little bit of this. I'm going to stay away from the berries and I'm going to stay away from the purple. Because I think that was where my issue happened.
Uh, Ellen Slayer says, I watched the resin pour video. Next time, could you please show how you prep your canvas for resin? It's just, you're just cleaning your paintings, just like you, if you're going to varnish. That's it. Tape off the behinds. Just watch my tutorials um, on how to clean your paintings. That's all we do. Nothing different. It's just the same as if you were going to varnish. Key thing is to make sure they're dry. And yeah, clean. and clean. You want to get that silicone off, and make sure you're wearing gloves. Yes, it is a sticky. So, well, no, so that you get, you don't get the oil from your hands on it. Okay, so we're layered again. Catherine wants to know: Do you ever do puddle pours? I don't like puddle pours. I've done them, and I don't like them. I am a dirty pour girl, right? Yes. Most people know me by my dirty pours. Only a nut. So I'm going to go ahead and give this just a little more contrast. Sorry about the autofocus, guys. The camera has a mind of its own. It's the metallics, too. So now we're getting that peacock pearl up. Barry will be in the background. All right, let's let that rest for a minute. See where it's going to go. This is really pretty right here. Uh, Mercedes is joining us originally from Ecuador, now living in Jacksonville, Florida, and just really loves your pouring. Now, when I stretch this out, we're going to get a whole different effect. We're just letting it rest for a minute. So I want to see what that white's going to do. And Nellie says, how about a string pour with a brighter color? I would have to pour a lot of that paint off of there to do a string pour. Otherwise, it would just sink. Looks like a centipede is burning to April. Okay. Here we go. There's a ton of paint on here, so I can stretch all I want. I'm working some of that berry off of there. But I did leave some for the middle. It's like a slinky. <laughs> Are you gonna sing the slinky song? I don't know, Carol. Carol said it's a slinky. Oh. I want to stretch this peacock pearl out in this corner. Mylene has joined us. She forgot it's Monday. <laughs> we thought last night with it being Sunday. Julie says, leave it right there. It's gorgeous. An elephant's tree trunk, according to Kathy. I still don't like it here. But if I bring Some this one, let me go this way. That's just the paint's gray. I totally got it. It's very Van Gogh. Yeah, it's Van Gogh, all right. <laughs> that was what I thought when I first did it. Mary says, Mary Wicks says, that's awesome. Shelly loves it. Still has a lot of that berry in the middle. Do you see anything, Alan, in that painting? Let me torch I can't say what I see. My hands are all sparkly. You what? I can't say what I see. Is it bad what you see? <laughs> it's not a bajayjay, is it? No, 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 it's not. <laughs> Okay, so 
I'm going to leave this because even if I don't like it when it's dry, I can use it as a background for something else because I can always paint something here. Kevin, the, Kevin says 100 people are going to want to know how you did that. <laughs> a pink praying mantis. But these colors dry so different than when they're wet. All right, let me show you up close. I'm not gonna fuss with it anymore because I do wanna see what it looks like when it's dry. There's a lot going on in that berry mess that I'm curious to see what that's gonna do when it's dry. And I love this corner here and I like this little spot right here. So I didn't wanna tilt any more of that off. I've got a ton of cells and I have a ton of paint underneath that I can't use for skins. It's too mucky. One of the things that's really neat about the the acrylic pouring is you can show the same painting to five different people and they will see five different things within the painting. Yeah, I never see too much. If I'm watching somebody else while they're pouring, I'll find things. But I don't see things like when I'm painting. Carol's got a question. She says, I know they look different when dry. What about after you varnish? Does the life and color come back? It does. Yep, it does. It it brings the depth up. Um, and I'm going to show you um, some paintings that we varnished or that we resined that look. They're just beautiful. They're, like I don't even want to sell them. I already took four in the house to hang in the foyer. Should I go get them? Please. No. No. <laughs> you afraid you might get an offer? They're not going anywhere. They're good. No, they're not. They're staying here because they're my friends. Yeah. And Shelly wants to know, if you're disabled, is there a discount? What do you mean if you're disabled, if there's a discount? Do you mean do I offer a discount to people who are disabled? Um, if you see a painting that you love, you can always email me um, because it costs us money to list them and we have to pay fees when we sell them. So if we sell them privately, um, we don't charge quite as much. Miley wants to know what our living room, living room looks like. Um, I don't, you know, I, I was good. I only have, what, four in there? Four. Because I just added a new one. We have the royal ferret. The royal ferret. That was our very first eight cup flip cup on a 24 by 36. And it's just horrendous. No. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Oh, I hate to throw that much paint away and not pull any skins. Okay. Earlier we were talking about um, stone coat right and, and the resin and tina's been doing a lot of work with the uh, resins lately uh she posted three videos last week I did. um she's going to show you some of the final results of paintings that she's done this is what this is my snake can you see him oh wait a minute it's so shiny it's, it's glass do you see my snake that's my snake. But, okay, so here's the back. I'm going to give this another coat. I've done two, but it needs another coat on the edges. But it's all taped. When I take this tape off, all these little bubbles are going to come off. On some resins, it doesn't do that. On stone coat, it comes right off. I have not had any problems. So this will get another coat because I need to cover these edges a little bit better. So what I'll do is put something underneath to make sure it doesn't dip anymore in the middle. And that, that is one thing. It does give some uh, some weight to the painting. Oh, yeah. Lots so it's very important when you're using and applying it, you have some kind of support, and especially if you're using some of the larger canvases in the center of the painting so that you don't get the dipping and the pooling of the resin in the center. Can I grab that box, darling? over there. Okay, here's another one that we did. 
This was a flip and drag. See the difference? How deep. I had someone tell me last night that not all people like resin finished pieces. Well, I'm going to have some that aren't resin finished. But when I pick up a painting and I look at the metallics, like here, I want that to pop. I want people to look in that painting and say, wow, look how deep that is, or look how that's up and that's down. Love the finish. And we love the finish on it. Where's that one? Okay, I have one I want to show off. This was the very first pour I ever did that uh, Tina has finished off with the stone coat. And if I remember correctly, this was a, was it a floating cup, I believe. Now, I personally see this as Dragon's Eye number two, uh -huh. but uh, number one has already been sold. A lot of metallics in this. I don't know if you can see the glass-like finish on it. It's just, it, it just brings the quality to the painting itself. Sell heaven. Yes, I agree, Catherine. Tina's looking for uh, a couple of other paintings she wants to show. This one is what? That's a string pole. This is a string pole that she did, what, about a month ago? Oh, wow. Again, finished with the uh, stone coat resin. And as you can see, it's like a glass like finish. Lady uh, gemologist, that was actually a request. Somebody wanted us to do a cross. Uh, Lady gemologist wanted to see the one with the cross. That was a request that we did. Okay. Does you guys remember, Nate, you remember this one. My sea urchin. <laughs> That's nice, Al. Just sit on a painting. <laughs> I'll put them in my chair. It looks better with resin than it did in the video because I hated this painting. I was like, yeah, whatever. But the blue flash is purple in here. If you tip it one way, it's blue. If you tip it another way, it's purple. But it came out pretty with the resin on it. Uh, Marilyn wants to know, does it make them heavy? Yeah, it does. So you feel like you have a piece of art in your hands. Here's one here. It makes them heavier, which means it's going to cost more to ship them. That's for sure. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Shelly wants to know, what do you support the canvas with and do you leave the support? You can put, um, we have foam board that you can stick in the back. And then when you set it up on cups, you want to kind of keep it so it's not pushing. Like you won't see the cups because then you'll have those marks when you resin. This was the one that I did that was like tapestry. I just love it with the resin. And you can clean this off with Windex. Of course, it needs to be wiped off because I was just manhandling it. And I love this one. You have to see it in person, especially right here. It's really pretty. And then this was a diptych. I think this is how it goes. Oh, 
I never get them right. Wait. Yes, that's how it goes. That's a diptych. They flow together. And then I have another diptych. Some of these might look familiar because, of course, they're videos. Good night, Kathy. There's another diptych. The purples and... I just love the shine with the resin. And this was the last one that I did yesterday. Just wakes them up. Now, if you compared that to a varnish painting, if I would have just varnished this, it would have been totally different. And I can see right now that we cannot put them face to face. So this is probably going to have to be sanded and recoded. Because they aren't cured long enough yet. You want to cure them for at least 72 hours before you start manhandling them. Because they will get dense in them. And then this one, of course, with the gold. We have so many more flipping drags and dirty pores that we've resined. And of course, the bun rack is full. They're waiting for their second coat. Uh, April says she loves resins, but scared to try it since the, it is pricey. It is, it is pricey. A pricey mess up. It is pricey, but if you mix it correctly, if you watch my videos, if you mix it correctly and apply it correctly and cover it while it's curing, you'll be okay. Don't be scared. Start on something small. Do some five by sevens or some coasters. Get used to the feel of playing with resin. And when you're ready to do a painting, just give me a holler and I'll help you. Hey, Allie. Glad you could join us, Allie. Uh, Catherine, uh, the auction was actually last night. Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, 55 paintings last night. They're all gonna be going out the door very soon. Okay, and April, um, concerning the resins, uh, if if you're unsure again, Tina did three videos last week on the resins. Yeah, I did. Um, just watch them. She gives you tips and tricks for working with resins. Yeah, we kind of took it from opening the jug to mixing to applying. To sh I show you how to sand for the second coat. So check those videos out. They were last week, so they're not too far back. Um, on the channel. I have not, Mary Ellen, because it still needs to cure for another week, and I already told him I wasn't wasting my resin on that. <laughs> that. That one might be my first varnish piece. Maybe I'll do some varnish on that. Um, that was a Monday night pour, Catherine. I uh, I think it was three weeks ago we did that one. I know I've been resining ones that were three weeks ago. I missed the troll. Uh, you didn't miss it. Nate took care of it. Any more questions, guys? Oh, Ellie wants me to varnish with the leaf blower. <laughs> I don't think so, Allie. I'm going to be trying something. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I'm going to try it on Wednesday. And if it works out and dries correctly, um, I'm going to bring that to the channel. Um, I've seen it done. Um, actually, one was in a magazine, and then i seen one here. So I'm going to try it on Wednesday. And if it dries correctly, we will, be we will definitely be introducing that to the channel. Brunin wants to know the name of the resin again. Uh, you... Stone Coat Art Coat Resin. The link is below. If you purchase the half gallon kit, which is $55, pick out two metallic powders, or you can go with the gallon kit, doesn't matter um, what you buy. 
but it has to be over eighty dollars. And if you put the code in CWA all in caps at checkout, it'll take thirty dollars off your order. Uh, yeah, Nate, I will someday, hon. <laughs> I promised him last week I was going to talk to him about that box. And do I not mention it every time I walk mm -hmm. by it? <laughs> yeah. Nate, you have no clue, hon. If you could just come and spend like three days with me, I'd get all caught up. Avoidance. <laughs> it's not avoidance. Uh, Cheryl, she's going to do that. She's going to uh, Wednesday. She wants to know what time. Um, oh, that's just going to be a private video. Um, and I'm just going to be trying something out, and I'll probably film it while I'm trying it. But I have to wait for it to dry to do the results. So, Yes, Mylene, we're not poor anymore tonight. We are totally exhausted. We packed and shipped 55 paintings today. So we're very pooped. Well, i got one more canvas here. Go ahead. You want to do a pour, Alan? Go ahead. Should we let Alan do another pour? Should I do another pour, guys? He found a canvas, so it's all him. Yes, it's $15 for shipping. But it's worth it. That box is heavy. Yes, they want you, Dallin. Yes, they do. Well, it's, it's not that I want yet. Alan to do a dirty pour. He's putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. So... You do what you want, though, hon. But I would really love it if you tried your pour. Don't check it. Sherry says, just waiting for a doctor. No better way to kill time than watching us. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a lot of latecomers. I didn't catch any pours. You want me to do okay? You can do whatever you want. Man. I want to swipe, a flip and drag. Well, they're all telling you now, huh? Well, he's only got a twelve by twelve canvas, so um, you could do a tiny little flip and drag. You've never done one of those either. Swipe, Labor Day pour. Labor Day 4. Labor Day 4. What's that? I don't know. Dirty 4. Everybody's calling for a dirty 4. Yeah, pour. do the dirty 4. I have not used the resin yet. No. He watches me do it. And he's <laughs> I cleaned the resin. <laughs> so I have worked with it. But no, I have not done anything with the resin yet. Sure you have. You've cleaned all the resin cups out for yes. me with alcohol. <laughs> All right, so do a dirty pour and use three of these little cups so that you have some color to play with. Yeah, we did a red, white, and blue pour for July 4th, so it's still sitting on the curing rack. I have not touched it yet. I'm trying to decide if I want to varnish it or resin it. Angel wings. So my, uh, w wants to know if you've tried the angel wings. No. That's Kristen's domain. I let Kristen have that all to herself. I don't like to copy, copy. Okay. Golden white. I don't want you to use all your gold. You just got that. Orange, red, and black. <laughs> what do you mean? I got, Trina, I've got Trina lots here? of gold. Oh, there's not a lot of gold in the bottle now. That's bronze over there. So I like the bold colors myself. Stay away from the red, because you've got mud tonight. Whoa. Mud is good. Green, purple. <laughs> Stephanie wants to know how you keep up with me because of my OCD about my workspace. <laughs> well, I have not slapped his hands, and I have not. Was it, Who was it that told me I should spank you? <laughs> I have not spanked you. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not a blues person. Blue. So why don't you do, like, the phalo greens and the... I did yellow green earlier. I know, but you have to stay with, like, a color family and add highlight colors. 
So now here's here's the teaching moment. Okay. Okay. So what did you pick? I have first Grumbacher phthalo green. Okay. So the opposite of phthalo green on a contrast scale would be a light turquoise color. So let's say um, artist loft aqua. Let's go with aqua. Uh, way at the end of that shelf, okay? No, no, no. Down, 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 down. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So then when you pick your next color, you want it to be the opposite of the aqua. So let's say purple, like dioxazine violet. So how is dioxazine? Yeah, dioxazine. Dio dioxazine violet. violet. Okay, so now that you look at the dioxazine violet and you look at the phthalo green, you need something light that's going to be a contrast to the aqua. And you, I know you're looking at the lavender. That's fine. Pick the lavender. Lucas lavender. Lucas lavender. Now, you have to have a highlight color. See how I teach? <laughs> gold. You can go with gold. Warm penny. Makes you can go easy. with copper. Yeah. Or you can go with that deep bronze too. Not a lot of gold there. So um, why don't you go with the deep bronze up on the next shelf up? Deep bronze yep. metallic. Yeah. And you can also put a little bit of warm penny in there. That's a dark copper. Bottom shelf. Oh, no, never mind. I, did, I didn't put it back where it belonged. My bad. No. <laughs> okay, so now you need white yeah. and you need black. White with silicone. You put the silicone in that earlier. I put it in the other one. So those two right there you want. No? This one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's got this. Spray your cups. Uh, not by your canvas. I've already told you that a thousand times, and you're still doing it. You haven't told me a thousand. Times. You don't want silicone on your canvas because then your paint won't stick. Why are you wiping it out? You're doing a dirty pour. I'm just spreading your own cup. No, you're not. You're wiping it out. <laughs> Teaching. <laughs> On this episode of the Lock Orders. If you have spots of canvas showing through on your pores, it's where the silicone has hit the canvas before the paint did. Yeah, Alan, you forgot your pad cover. This was an un Thank you, April. <laughs> unrehearsed, unrehearsed pour. I was waiting to get your cup spelled, and then I was going to tell you. you. <laughs> okay. It's just a comedy of errors. No, it's not a comedy of errors. It's a teaching moment. Ellie says I'm a sneaky teacher. Eddie, do you want to pour? I'm going to do something with Eddie's paws on some of my canvases that have the background pours. 
I'm going to use his claws to make flowers, but I got to trim his hair between his pads first. Okay, now you're in business. What do you got in there? Oh, they're Paper expecting towel? something. No. Okay. Hi, Lorraine. Can I prepare for my own channel? No, thank you. <laughs> I asked him that. Was it last week? I said, Alan, you want to start your own channel? No. <laughs> He works 12 hours a day. There's no way he could maintain his own channel. Okay. So you can start with either white or black. I think we got to go black. Okay. And not a lot. What are you doing? Cups. Nothing's going on the canvas yet. I almost caught him squirting it on the canvas. You really were going to do a dirty pour, weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Next. It's up to you what colors you want to go, but you want to make remember, remember contrast, color, contrast, color. Okay, and layer, not pour into the each paint. Right. So you do like zigzags across the black. Right. There you go. You can use a little more than that. Okay. I have not been on YouTube all day today, guys. I did answer some comments before the live, so if you have new videos up, I will get to them. I'll probably be up, be up till 4 o'clock. <laughs> We've been packing from the auction yesterday for about, what? All day. It seemed like. Almost 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. We had a good system going, too. He was cutting the foam board and helping me tape boxes. And taking help. care of my brother. Yeah, taking care of the dinner. Doing that. I told him, I said, I'm not cooking tonight. Go get food. <laughs> uh, those are five ounce cups. Because it's a 12 by 12 canvas, I want them to have a lot of color to place. I don't know if you guys watch my videos, I like to control the pour. So I'm letting, I'm going to, well, I'm going to show him how to place color. Hi, Marva. I'm sorry if I missed anybody else coming in. I'm trying to watch him and. He's supervising. I got my Mandela, um, what do you call them? Daughters. So I'm going to be playing with those too pretty soon. I've got to have some things to play with for the winter. I got my Cricut, my vinyls on the way. Hey, Terry. You made it for the last pour, hon. And Alan's gonna do a dirty pour. He's never done one before, so I'm just coaching him on. All right, you wanna do another layer. Another layer. Another layer. Yep, so you're gonna start with your black. That's gonna be a lot of paint. No, no it's not. Because you're gonna pour off too. <coughs> Well, I do this. You can use the resin chart, too. Um, so for a square foot of resin, it's three ounces. So I double it. So let's say it, uh, 12 by 12 would be six ounces of paint. 
you have to have room to tilt paint because if you stretch it too much, you lose your cells and you lose your um, composition. And that's why you'll end up with zigzags or striations. So you want to make sure you have enough paint on there to play with. Nate, Nate, I just need you to come and spend three days with me. <laughs> and we can go over the box. <laughs> I'll cook. I promise. <laughs> I'll even take you out for coffee. We've discovered a couple new restaurants that recently opened, oh, too. yeah. We went to a new restaurant. Was it Saturday? Yeah, went to Showmars. That was good. Greek. They have Greek and Southern and what was the other one? I can't remember. But they have such a variety on their menu. Maybe we should take up a collection for Nate to come and stay with us for three days. <coughs> he got to come all the way from Arizona. And, well, I'll have to look at those $29 flights and see if they have one coming from Arizona to Raleigh. Excuse me. You got it? Oh, you got it. You're waiting. I do not, Diane. Um, I go by the resin calculator and just double it. So if you go to like Art Resins page, um, put in your size canvas, they'll tell you how much resin to use and then just double that. There's not much in there. There you go. Good. You ready? All right. Do you want to give him a tiny swirl with the skewer? So I'll just make like a little star. There you go. It's happening, guys. I'm going to get my uh, radio voice on. Now Alan is going to pour the paint. <laughs> All right, so when I pour, I just kind of do that swirl thing and overlap. So you've got three cups, so don't worry about getting too much in one spot. Swirl, swirl. There you go. Ooh, pretty. Thank you, Shelly. Thanks, Ronan. All right, so you have a lot of color in this cup. Now you see how much green you've got coming mm -hmm. through here? So drag that cup this way and place some white in there. There you go. Whoops, stop. You just added more green. Put, it, put that down here. You don't have to use it all. That's good. All right, put those cups aside because we can use those for tiles. And now you're going to be doing your cuppy hands and tilting. Can you pick it up there so they can watch you? There you go. Thank you, Cheryl. I love what you've got going on on that left side out. If you can stretch that towards the right and dump some of that. Sorry, Eddie. Just see if you can get rid of a little bit of that. Yep. Because I love this too right here. <coughs> Is it 
kena. It is so humid here. Those patio doors are just covered with fog. It's so humid here. Oh, that's beautiful. Don't drip in it. One little spot here, touch it with your finger. Gorge. Bye, Shania. Got some crazy cells over in this area here. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to tilt that. A little inchworm peeking out through here. A little inchworm? You got any caterpillars going on there? Let's torch it and see what we get. This one's hard, but I got to fill the other one for you. A little heavy on the green, but I didn't know it looks great, and that copper's gonna be beautiful when it dries. All right, Allie, you want to pick it up and show it to him? He did fantastic for his first dirty pour. Don't tilt it; you're gonna drip. Trying to keep the glare off. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Good job, Alan. Okay, so you guys saw it. His first dirty pour. Now you can know you can do it. Just remember, color contrast. Color contrast, color contrast. So if you pick a green, you want to go something lighter. If you pick a purple, you want to go with something lighter. Um, your coppers and your bronzes always go together. And your blacks and your whites, um, just a highlight. But he did it. I'm very proud of him. Yeah. So the fins. No, honestly, that's my first one. That's his first dirty pour. Yep. So I'm gonna put some gloves on because I'm gonna use up your paint for a couple of tiles. Do you wanna take your painting? We will take that to the drying rack. Bye bye, painting. Don't drip on anything besides the floor. You should see my new linoleum. It is covered in resin drips. There was no way I was going to keep that looking new. But it's just a sheet of linoleum to protect the garage floor, so that's okay. So I have four tiles here. Let's see if I can use them up. Alan's going to take over on the screen. Thank you, everyone, for your encouragement. You do good, boo, boo. It does. It does help when you have a, a coach in the house. Hello, Laura. So to me, that's kind of blah. So then I take some paint that's left in the cup. Just roll it through. That gives me a base to stretch out what I put on. John says, my husband is colorblind, so he just doesn't get it. You know, that would really suck to be colorblind. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but it would. 
Nate says I'm a natural. Nate, I got another idea I'm working on. So. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Every time he says that, he scares me. Nothing extravagant. So you can create with your leftover paint and your paint from your pad. Um, you cup? See those paper cups over there? Just set them up on the drying rack, and I'll just take these over one at a time. I have a lot of paint here to play with, so this I'm just using to base coat the tile. But if you have really pretty runoff, you could make some beautiful tiles. Uh, Laura wants our tiles porcelain tiles. Yeah, they're ceramic. From Dell Tile. My hometown tile company that closed that they have here now in Morrisville, I believe. So it's always a good idea to have some clean prep tiles to uh, or some four by six and five by seven canvases too. Yep. Just so that if you're worried about wasting paint or uh, you know, throwing out some excess paint, you can always you know, do the tiles, let them dry, resin them when you're done or varnish. Yeah, if you're just using them for decoration, you don't have to resin them. But if you're going to use them for coffee cups, you definitely want to put some resin on them. Okay. Uh, Shelly wants to know, how do you prep the tiles? Um, I just clean them with alcohol and put tape. I'll show you with the next one while we do the back. And Wendy says, resin looks great, but doesn't it hurt the bottom line a lot? Um, it does add cost. But I wouldn't say it hurts the bottom line. I think your finished product is, you'll is get a much more, higher quality. You'll than, get more for your paintings as well. Yeah, because you're going to charge that extra. Um, Laura wants to know, what about jewelry? Yeah. <coughs> okay. So on the back, I just tape them off as close to the edge as you can without going over the edge. So after you resin, you're just going to pull that tape right off. It comes off so easy. And Terry wants to know, how do you like stone coat for your tiles? I love it. Amazing. Love, love, love it. One coat and it's done. So I'm using Alan's pad runoff just for base. So when I pour these leftover beautiful things in the cup, I have something to run them on. It's kind of like having a base coat. Jamal just wants to know, art resin or countertop coasters? Um, I don't see any difference on the coaster. I've been using the art resin, but I also have the countertop resin. The countertop resin um, is made for countertops. So if I would think if you're going to do a lot of heavy wear and tear with your coasters, you might want to use the countertop. But if you're just making them to sell, like at a craft fair or whatever, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, hesitate to use the art coat. That one's pretty. 
episode. Yeah. Do we have more questions? Let's get mucky. Terry Alexander says, I want something that doesn't leave rings. Um, I haven't had a problem with the art resin. The art coat. The art coat from Stone Coat. Stone Coat, yeah. Yes. I'm using one as well. And I put my hot cup of tea on there every morning, fresh out of the microwave, so that cup's very hot. Um, Sherry wants to know, have you tried uh, JR Saffron Paste yet with the Resin Super? No. I just use my acrylic paints, that little dab um, on the end of a popsicle stick and the metallics that Stone Coat offers. I have a couple of pow mica powders, um, ranger powders, and um, gold mayron and bronze mayron. Those are all in my Amazon shop. Got enough for one more. And Nate wants to know, how much do you sell your tiles? If I if I sell them as a set, um, and I'm going to be, four. and when I do set of four on Etsy, they'll be $30 with free shipping. If I sell them privately, they'll be 25 uh, Let's see. Somebody wants to know, what gray is that? <laughs> yeah, what gray? There's no gray. It's just called muck. <laughs> that is... From a dirty pour that I did earlier. We are using up paint as a base as well. Just for the cup to have something to glide on. I know it's not very pretty, is it? <laughs> okay, this is my last one. Love that copper, Alan. Look how pretty that is. Southwesterny. Can you um, pop my glove? Thanks. It was getting too yucky. Did you let Eddie in? No. He didn't really want to go out. I think he got afraid when he saw all the steam on the patio doors. Okay. So thanks everybody for stopping in tonight. If you have any more questions, um, I can answer them while I'm cleaning up here. Beautiful. Look, at, I even resin nails together. <laughs> Just noticed that. Thank you, Catherine. We love everybody spending time with us on Monday nights. Sponsorship giveaway is still going until October 31st. Um, we have a PayPal link below if you want to donate to the channel. Or you can do it here through Super Chat. Uh, Laura, we do this every Monday night from 9 a.m. to 11. I'm sorry, About 9 11. p.m. 9 to 11 p.m. Gosh, don't say Standard night. Time. We have been doing it since 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> um, other channels to check out? Um, um, as always, Nate Cerami, he's one of our mods here, Mylene, Jeannie Marie, uh, Heather Wright, 
W-R-I-G-H-T. And Ann Osborne. Mixed Media Girl, Marcy. Anne Marie Ritterhoff. Shaska Smith. S A S K I A Smith. She's good too. I like watching her. If you're interested in the resin, of course. Oh, definitely check out Stone Coat Countertops. They will be live tomorrow night, and I believe Marcy is going to be their co host for Mixed Media Girl. Um, Artist Till Death. Artist Till Death, Jeff and Erica for resin. They're usually live every day. And or that's 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Monday nights. Monday nights. Eastern Standard Time. And let's see. Um, Melly D. Gosh, we just sat and watched a bunch of them. Oh. Buddy Measles. Jan, you're, you're so welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't um, subscribed yet, please uh, click the subscribe button. Um, anything else you want to add? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you again all for joining us. And... We'll be doing this same time next Monday. Same time, same place, same space in the porage. <laughs> uh, Laura, when no Fulton Brewers were, have we? I did look at it. Yep, I did. Lots of color pouring. Okay. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for um, sponsoring the channel tonight. I got paint on me again. Um, thank you for all the donations. Thank you for joining us last night at the auction. It's just, you guys are great. Just fantastic. We couldn't ask for better subscribers. If you have any questions that you didn't get a chance to ask, or if you remember them later, reach out to me on Facebook at Christina Welch Art. The link is below. Or you can email me at christinawelchart at yahoo.com. Or you can leave it here in the comments. And uh, let's see. The next thing we got coming up is our next Monday Night Live. And I'll be filming tomorrow, so you'll have videos to watch during the week. And hopefully I'll get another resin one up. Boxing. Oh, unboxing. Yes, I'm going to do that as a video. I mentioned to someone that I was going to do it tonight, but we've got so much stuff laying around that I didn't want to box paintings. So I will definitely do that as a video tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for staying with us. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for your encouragement. And thanks for suggestions. Um, we have fan mail P.O. box now. Um, the address will be below. It's P.O. Box 863, Youngsville, North Carolina, 27596. Um, I, I do have invoices out so far, Laura. I have not done yours yet. I have two more to do, and I'm going to do them right after we sign off. So um, hopefully everybody's been getting their payments in, and we can get all these boxes out of here. We have about 40 boxes sitting here. So <laughs> Nate says he needs your courage with resin. Nate, if I do a resin piece before you, I'll let you know. I don't think you're going to do a resin piece before Nate because Nate's already played with resin. <laughs> so don't be afraid, Nate. That's no, don't be afraid of the resin. Like I said, start out on a tile, do one little tile or small. or do a little four by six or five by seven canvas. Once you get the feel of it and you get used to the torch or the heat gun, whatever you're going to use with it. Just just remember, it's probably going to take two coats if you're doing it on canvas because the canvas will puddle a little bit in the middle. So don't be discouraged. You can put more coats on and do them thin enough so you don't waste a lot of resin. But, yep. 
Yeah, resin, you know, you either love it or hate it. Um, you love the finished piece, but you hate doing it. So I will see you all this week on my videos. And Ellen and I will see you next Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time for our regular Monday Night Live from our North Carolina Parage. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see y'all on the next one. Thank Bye you. now.